Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, and today we're back with Volume 8 of the Buyer Masterclass. Today we're going to do basic lighting. We're going to learn to do headlights, taillights, turn signals, brake lights, and a couple of additional lights, uh, how to turn them on and off from the radio. So this starts to get more and more into the capabilities of the SFR1. Um, let's get started. So we're going to talk about lighting basics with the SFR1 today. And so I've got my SFR1. Basically this is uh, the one I've been using from the previous volume. So it has a uh, S-Bus cable to my receiver. We have a servo hooked up for steering. We've got our programming cable plugged in. We've got a speaker plugged in and a volume control plugged in. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do some basic lights. Um, We'll do headlights, turn signals, and brake lights. Those are always the most popular, and, uh, and we'll get those set up. Now, I'm going to use this LED-8, which is a test strip that plugs into the SFR-1 and has eight uh, LEDs on it. And that way we can see visually what's going on. I could also use an AKL-8 which has little plug-ins and I could use LEDs and I will actually demonstrate that at the end but for now we're just going to plug the LED 8 in to the first outputs and that will be able to show us visually what we're doing with the programming. Uh, <clears throat> because of the way this works I'm going to probably have to switch back and forth a few times to show you lighting and show you the computer screen but we'll zoom in on the computer screen and set up some basic lights. Well the sound teacher software should be pretty uh, familiar uh, to you by now so what we're going to do is we're going to do some lighting so we're going to go to the configuration tab and then we're going to go to outputs. Now outputs here um, the program has filled in some outputs for us. I don't want those, so we're going to just delete those. We're going to start from scratch and, and just show how to do the outputs. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I want to do headlights, turn signals, and brake lights. Now, brake lights and turn signals operate automatically off of other inputs from the SFR1. All we have to do is specify where we want them to put out. Now, the SFR1 has eight outputs here and eight here, so they're numbered 1 through 8 and then 9 through 16. And the final two are your positive wires. This is a positive grounded system, and I'll explain more about that in a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to take output 1, we're going to put headlights in there. So we'll put the drop-down arrow down, and we're going to go low beam headlight and click OK. Now you'll see the intensity is 100% and that's output 1. So let's do a couple of, well let's just do the headlight for now. Okay, so now we have to decide how we want to turn our headlights on. Earlier we used this stick right here to do our horn sounds. So we're going to do this stick to do our lighting. And uh, so that is going to be prop 4. That's channel 4. So what we're going to do is go over to the prop channels. And let's take a quick look at the S-Bus setup. We already have channel 4 set up in prop 4. So we're going to go to the prop channel here and we're going to go to prop 4. And we're going to do short in position and we'll call this low beam headlight and click OK. So now we have put a low beam headlight in the slot here for this stick to operate and on the output we have the low beam headlight on the output page. So what I'm going to do is plug my battery into my SFR1 and transfer the project data. Again, this should all be pretty familiar. And it'll set up that headlight. Now I'm going to zoom back out so we can see how that works. 
So we're zoomed out, and I've got my little test strip here. I turn my radio on. So now when I move the stick over, you can see that the LED turns on. Move it over again, and the LED turns off. So we have successfully added a lighting function. On, off, just like that. And really, that's all there is to it. It is quite simple. Now, you can get all kinds of adjustability on that light. You can set the intensity, you can make it flash, you can do all kinds of other things, which we will get into in a minute. But that is the basics of lighting. You just decide what output you want, number one. Decide what prop you want to turn it on, set that up, and you can turn it on and off. Now let's take a look at uh, brake lights and turn signals. So let's take a look at brake lights and turn signals. So output number two here, we're going to click the drop down arrow and we're going to click brake light and click OK. Output number three, we're going to click indicator left and click OK. Output number four is going to be indicator right and click OK. So we've filled in our brake light and our indicators. Now there's a couple other uh, things that you need to select to make those work. Obviously you're not going to turn on turn signals with a switch. You probably want those to work automatically with your steering. The brake light you want to work automatically with your throttle. So we'll go to output options right next door brake light always on at stationary. Now that's checked and I kind of like that. That means when the truck is sitting the brake lights are on. When it's going forward or reverse the brake lights are off and when it stops they're on again. And we've got hazard lights automatically on when reversing. So that means when you're backing the, the uh, brake lights will flash or the turn signals will flash and that's pretty cool. We'll leave that clicked automatic indicator lights while turning. We need to click that. And that means when you're turning the uh, turn signals will come on with the steering and you can actually set the thresholds. Steering threshold indicator on is 40 so when you've got 40 percent of the servo travel the flashers go on and then off we have it set at 10 percent so when it goes back to straight it shuts them off and you can even set the flash rate. We're not going to adjust that. So we're going to transfer the project data and then we will zoom out and see how that works. So we've zoomed back out and one thing that's apparent is now there's a light on all the time and that's number two. That's our brake light. So if we take the throttle and move it forward, the brake light will go off. Comes on when it stopped. Reverse it goes off and you'll notice that our turn signals are flashing because we left uh, indicator or hazard lights flashing when in reverse. Brake lights back on, back off. Our turn signals will now work with the steering. And there's our right turn and our left turn. And we still have our headlights available right there or off. So that's our turn signals, brake light, rear hazards. Pretty straightforward. Uh, that's how you set it up. And let's do an additional light here. So let's do a, a couple more lights here. Um, we've got output 5. And let's just drop that down. Got to hit output 5, that one right there. And we'll do a, we'll call this one a rear fog light. Now they have some unusual names for things. I would call that a tail light, but that's okay. And then output 6, we're going to do output 6 without a name. And I'll show you how to do that. And then output 7, drop that down. Over here on the right we have some interesting choices, but we have in motion on, which basically means when the truck's moving the light will turn on, and when the truck is not moving it will turn off. So we'll do that for output 7. Okay, 
Now, I mentioned uh, output 6 being uh, something that we want to turn on and off with the radio. So we're going to go over here to the prop channel and remember we have this stick right here turn our headlights on and off. So we'll go this direction to turn output 6 on and off. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with this drop down box here. Since we don't have a name on it, it doesn't have indicator left or whatever, we just use output 6. So you don't have to go with the names that they use. You can just there's all 16 outputs right there. You can just click a number. So we're going to do that. We'll go back to our outputs and double check everything. Looks good. Transfer the project data. And now we'll zoom out and take a look at it. So I've got my little test strip here. I've got my radio. So we still have our headlights. But now I should be able to move this and get output 6 to turn on. Yep. That's correct. And then uh, in motion, output 7 should come on. And it certainly does. So that's how we do. So we've got output 7, headlights. In reverse, we should get our flashers. We should get our turn signals. Uh, I did forget to add a way to turn on the rear tail lights. So let's go back. Well, actually, I didn't forget. I just forgot on purpose so that I could show you how to go back and do that. Um, same thing as I mentioned before with the sound teacher hooked up with the um, programming cable, it's super easy to just modify and change things. So let's go back to the software and take a look at that. Okay, back to the software. Remember, we, we added our, our tail lights on output 5, but we didn't add a way to turn them on. So we're going to go back and do that. We're going to go to the prop channels. And we're on prop channel 4, which is our, our left stick, side to side. So we have our, our headlights, when we move to the stick to the right, for one second it turns our headlights on. So what we're going to do is we're going to move the stick to the right for three seconds to turn the tail lights on. So we're going to go over here and we're going to click rear fog light and click OK. And now it put it in the three second long tab. So we're going to transfer the project data and then we will zoom back out and go back to the uh, SFR1. So here we are back at our, our uh, SFR1. So now everything should work like we showed. Headlights will come on. We hold it for three seconds. Now our tail lights are on. We hold it for three seconds again. Tail lights go off. One second, headlights go off. One second this way. Our other output, output six, which it could be whatever, running lights, dash lights, interior lights, I don't know. You've got a lot of outputs here. And uh, we turn that back off. We have our turn signals. We have our brake lights go off, we have our light come on automatically in motion, and we have our flashers when we're backing up. So that's our lighting basics. Now, we also have our sound still. And we have our engine sound. So we continue to build on, on the uh, SFR1. We now have nice sounds and we have nice lighting. Right now we're about the equivalent of a Tamiya MFC, only it sounds better, but we're just getting started. So that's all um, well and good. We've got our lights working, but now this is the real world and we want to use LEDs in our truck. So how do we do that? Well, that's pretty straightforward. 
every output is still going to be the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to power off the SFR1. Good habit. Always power it off when you're making connections or changing connections and I'll remove this LED8 test strip. Now, I'm going to put an AKL8 on, which plugs in exactly the same way and has the outputs all numbered 1 through 10. Remember the first 8 are, are your LEDs and the other two are your common, which in this case is a positive. You could also use the standard strip that comes with the um, SFR and you could just strip off the ends and solder the lights together. Um, I like to be able to test them first sometimes. That's why I use the LED8. That's my test. But the AKL8 works pretty good for that too. So let's hook up our headlights. We've got a headlight here. It has a resistor. <clears throat> you must use an appropriate resistor for the um, battery voltage that you're using. These are the lights that we sell at hobbyconcepts.net and they have a resistor built in. So again it's positive ground. So I'm going to hook the positive wire to number nine. Just push down this little button here and it just slides in there and grabs. Well, in theory. Normally I would tin these with solder, but I'm not in my shop. I don't have a soldering iron down here. So this might take a minute. There we go. And number one is our output for our headlights. So we'll put that in there. Okay, that's hooked up. Now I can put the power back on. Now if everything worked correctly, there you go. There's my headlight. Headlight off. How many lights can you put on this? You could put a lot. So if you wanted to have, um, you know, like four headlights, you can add four LEDs to that same output. If you wanted to put 20 running lights on one output, you can do that. You're really not limited. Um, that works pretty good. And sometimes it's really nice to use an LED just to see how how bright your lights are going to be because you can also adjust the intensity. Matter of fact, we'll take a look at that. So I talked about changing intensity and that is right here at the end. There's an intensity and these are set to 100%. So I can turn on my headlight and you can see kind of how bright it is. Turn it back off and I'm going to set the intensity to 10%. Transfer the project data. Again, this is so cool to be able to change this stuff on the fly. We'll turn it on. And now you can see it's much, much dimmer. Or you could probably see. Turn it back off. Put it back up to 100%. Transfer the project data. and turn it back on. Again, full brightness. You can adjust the intensity by 1% all the way from 0 to 100. Um, and that's handy if you want uh, different levels of lighting for, for some things. You know, maybe you would want uh, interior lights dimmer, uh, whatever. So, that's how you hook up standard LEDs. And remember, it's positive ground, so the positive wires all will connect to 9 or 10 and the negative wires will connect to the outputs. We've got our headlight on output 1 and our tail light on output 5, just like, like we had it set up, and I can turn my tail light on. So there's our two LEDs, and we can hook up multiples. So that's how you hook up uh, your standard LEDs.
Well, there you go. That's our, our uh, LED lighting basics. So we've got what? Headlights, taillights, turn signals, brake lights. Um, we got a, a light that goes on when we're moving. We have uh, turn signals, flashers, um, all kinds of the normal lighting functions that you would do. Um, they're easy to turn on and off and adjust the intensity. So I think we covered actually quite a bit of the lighting basics. Uh, in future volumes we will um, we'll do some real tricky lighting stuff. Um, but I think this this will get you covered for, for all those basic things. Now we're really past the level of what a Tamiya MFC will do. Plus it sounds better. Plus it'll run more lights. Uh, plus the lighting is, is way more selectable. You can do your own lights, any color you want. So there you go. Uh, give me a thumbs up on this video. Uh, comment in the comment section if you've got questions or ideas for future videos. I, uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching and the support of the buyer products. I think this is really great stuff for sound and lighting controls for your trucks or ships or tanks or whatever. So uh, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.